All right, looks like I'm alive. Hot dog. more of testing stuff out get that crap off there So what I'm doing is this is a avalanche mech from a what I'm calling a rescue lot that I just bought and they were based in a way that I really don't like so uh, and a lot of these mechs are posed in awkward positions so what I'm doing is just trying to save them to where I find them useful. So, so his feet are looking good. Yeah. No more green stuff on there. No more little rocks and crap. Let me see if I can get that base and show the difference. chair so that's a dragon too I'm gonna see here but that was the basing material used they used a 3d printed base filled it with green stuff and then whoever painted it which I think it was the commission painter at the time just put the gravel on there with super glue um, I, I hate it so the 3D bases I don't think are 3D printed bases I don't think are salvageable. So those are going to go and be replaced by these wooden MDF bases. And I've got 12 of these mechs to do. And they are painted as Draconis Combine mechs, but the paint jobs are not that great. So in some cases I'll have to reprime. Uh, by hand, I'm going to hand prime. In others, I'm just going to be able to cover up. It looks like the paint was put on thin enough that it shouldn't matter. Little little avalanche there, and then we got the the dragon. Two. I like the arm pose on the dragon. I'm not changing that. However, the leg position was pretty awkward. Looked like he was about to take a power shit. So, I don't want that. Nobody who would want that. Let's see if I can get this foot out. Huh. Let's see if I can do it this way. Wow. 
Okay. Well, we... Ooh. So, that foot's in there pretty darn deep. Pretty darn deep. Looks like it was pressed into the super glue, and, or pressed into the green stuff with super glue. Holy shit. That stuff's just flying. All right. This is going to be a pain in the ass. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to submerge the foot, this foot in some simple green, and maybe that'll loosen it. I could keep cutting, but I'm throwing, like, 3D printed bases and debris around my room. Holy cow, that shot across the room. So, um, yeah. But it kind of gives you an idea of what I'm dealing with, dealing with for with 12 mechs. So I'm gonna have to clean up their feet, their bases, um, and fix them. But I'm not doing all 12 at the same time. I'm gonna piece them out over time. That way I don't go crazy. Get that debris off the board. So we got the little avalanche here, widow avalanche. He's going to be the first one out the gate. So now that I remove that green stuff off his feet, off of his footsies, he should sit flush on the base or as flush as he's going to. Press down and let that lock tight cure. Whoop. He'll go over there. So, next up, oh no, let's work on the tomahawk. So I got the torso down, and the legs obviously pose to how I want them. And I got the, the main parts of the arms on there, I just don't have the guns. Well, funny story, when I bought the tomahawk, he came with the wrong arms. Mispacked. Now, Iron Wind was nice enough to send me the right arms. So I'm going to go ahead and clean those up real quick. And finish the tomahawk so he can get primed and get painted for a future spotlight. There we go. Little nubbins. And it looks like that's miscast a little bit. Like right there. If I can, I'm going to be doing a lot of filing. I probably can green stuff a little bit of battle damage on that, I guess. I, that's kind of disappointing, though. But it happens with metal casting. It happens. Alright, so one arm done. Get these little doodads off. Do, 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 do. A 
little bit of mold line up there. Okay, so there's mold lines going across the front there. That's uh, I'm glad I caught that now. Shave that down just a little bit. On the other one, is it the same way? Yep. All right, cool. I believe that is the left arm, and this is the right arm. Mr. Tomahawk here could have him face dead on but that's kind of boring I think off t tilt to the side right or left hmm um it's a good question uh, Lord Machado Typically, when it comes to BattleTech, I gotta be in the mood to build a lance. I'll I'll buy a whole lance in one go, um, and it's usually because I get inspired by one particular design. So I'll go on Master Unit List and I'll start looking for other things that may fit with it. Um, but maybe once every two three months, and then um. This, how long do I spend on painting them? How much time do I spend on painting them? It depends on the miniature. Uh, for example, this Warhammer 2 that I'm working on, maybe about three hours so far. And he's just about done. I'm going to do some extra highlighting on the edges. But he's he's ready to be varnished. Um, I'm not going to weather him at all. But for something that's like, I don't know, this little panther, I spent maybe 20 minutes on. Let's see here. He's just very basic. I mean, he was just paint red, wash, hot, dry brush red up on, and then put the decal on the center chest. It just really depends. I'd say more recently I've put a lot more effort into my painting than I used to. So probably about four hours a miniature is probably about right on average. Just about. Uh, I actually like it looking like that. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit of Loctite here. I am not going to bother pinning these arms. Which may be a fatal mistake, we'll see. Exciting YouTube watching paint dry or glue dry. Compelling television. Okay, I'm going to trust it. Okay. Cool. So. It's a lot of ATMs here. So like with that Warhammer 2C that I just showed off, I wanted a pair of Tomahawks, and I looked on the master unit list of what was compatible or what factions took the Tomahawks, and it came down to Clan Wolf or Hell's Horses. I think there's enough Clan Wolf players out there in the wild that I don't need to really 
take up that banner. But Hell's Horses, though, is also the one of the clans like that are arch nemesis with uh, Ghost Bear. My good buddy Midfield plays Ghost Bear quite a bit. So I figured it just made sense to go Hell's Horses so I can go beat up on his Ghost Bears. Wouldn't that be the pose that it's going to be in? Tomahawk is a beast. Just a true beast. Oh. Let it dry. I got one more to put together. But the star that the Tomahawks are going into, it's uh, two Tomahawks, the Warhammer 2C, um, the Savage Coyote here, and then a Hell Star. <laughs> I mean, it's a heavy, heavy assault star. And the best part of that is I duped him into accepting a challenge between clans. There were no stipulations other than star versus star. And then we locked in what we chose, and we didn't talk about weight class or points or anything like that. And he took a medium star, and that's what he's building currently. And I took an Assault Star, so once we actually play that game, I'll record it and I'll put it up uh, on the channel. But I got a feeling it's going to go my way. I think it's, I think it's going to be a brutal, brutal, brutal match. Well, I mean. Everybody, everybody paints at their own speed, man. Um, I think it just really depends on if when you think it's done. I'm kind of. I get to a point with a miniature, I get kind of disgusted, and I just stop because I feel like I can't make it any better than what it is. So that's that's usually my stopping point. All right. So we got all that, right? And that's one rotary gun. And that's the hip. Where's the other gun? There it is. The, I think the longest I ever spent on a miniature was probably my Age of Sigmar Slaughter Priest, where I spent probably a month on every night, about an hour a night. Um, and he, he looks alright. And he's probably my best example of doing skin tones. And then I look at other people's work that they've done, I'm like, ugh, I spent way too much and did not get the same result. But again, it's like your experience and how fast you go and and everything else. The tools that you use. I just recently started getting better brushes and it's amazing that a brush can actually have a huge impact on your output. Because it can. Word of Blake. <laughs> All right. So I have um, I have a couple Word of Blake mechs. Uh, I have a Legacy and a Light Ray, and um, I painted them up as Republic of the Sphere uh, colors. So I run them in my Republic of the Sphere uh, forces. Uh, I would love to do more Wabi stuff, especially the Celestials. They're really awesome. They're they're pretty badass. I just um, 
I just have trouble deciding where the, really if I really want to go hog hog wild, like starting a wobby force or just pick up a, a couple mechs here and there. But like I said earlier, I normally buy stuff by the lance or by the formation. So I think it's a good chance that eventually I'll end up getting more more wobby stuff. I really have no problem with the Word of Blake. I think their stuff is pretty awesome. I love their um, the Celestial Lambs. The new lambs. Those are those are pretty awesome. Those are pretty good. You know lambs don't really work that well. But my play group's pretty chill. I could probably bring a bunch of lambs and they wouldn't freak out too too much. Come on. There we go. The overhead camera angle um, that we're that I'm rocking today is probably going to be the subject of a video. I built a small little PVC rig to be above my my space so I could do this um, I'm quite pleased with the results looks, looks pretty good just PVC and a camera clamp and a webcam it's so flippin' simple you got like an all metal construction rig that you can buy on Amazon for like two hundred dollars. This cost me like fifteen bucks. Pretty nice. But out of all the Word of Blake stuff, what's your favorite mech from the Wobbies? Tal Zombies. I'll have to look that up. I don't think I know about the Tal Zombies. I feel like I should, though. Everybody complains about multi part metal miniatures. I love them and I hate them at the same time. Better amount of detail. But requires pinning usually somewhere. Done. 
The Raptor 2. Oh, now you're going to make me go and look that up. I know what it looks like in my head. But I want to see its stats. Raptor 2. Oh my gosh, five variants. That's that's cool. Experimental Jihad, obviously. So your base model's the 3X. And it rocks 18 inch movement, TMM of 3. It's out for Alpha Strike. Um, you know, that's not bad. ECM. Ooh. Taser. <laughs> Not quite the T Semp. Because the Taser is what, a one shot? Yeah, there it is on the, the 2X. Two X two. Now the two X two's got the T semp though. That might be a better buy. With an Angel ECM. That's that's dirty though. But the two X one, yeah. So yeah, so Word of Blake in Jihad and the Republic of the Sphere ended up using it afterward. Also has Void. Hmm. I, I can dig it. I can dig it. So do you run your Word of Blake uh, in levels? Slightly miscast up there. It's okay. Battle damage. It's always battle damage. Cause they really wanted these to be clean. These tomahawks to be super duper squeaky clean. But it's all right. I'll get over it. A little bit of schmutz on the face there. I love the tomahawk. I, I love the design. It's like a better dire wolf. A cooler dire wolf. glued into place. And so you can see on the first one I put together there's like a slight gap but very slight here. And on this one, it's just a huge gap. I, I guess 
I can butt it up against it like that. But then it's... I don't know. I think I'm just gonna fill it with green stuff. Call it a day on that. Just unfortunate. Let that dry. Yeah. Um, so for like the, the MWO resin stuff, yeah, you're probably going to be looking at War Hansa. Um, and like I said, I don't like advertising for them uh, too, too much. Because without catalyst or supporting iron win you know the game wouldn't be around um but yeah now war hansa uh there's a steel warrior studios actually makes some pretty cool not battle tech mechs um like he's got a pretty impressive stand-in for like the warhammer which i really really like i think it's like called the krieg's hammer or something like that But uh, yeah, you can. And then if you like, if you got access to a three D printer, the sky's the limit because all you got to do is go on Thingiverse and get the file, and you're you're good to go. Just off to the races on downloading and then printing. Uh, there was just as an informational nugget. If you go on the Lords of Battlefield forums, I don't know if they're still up, there were people in there um, selling the resin MWO Max. So there's, there's options out there. You just got to find them. Probably the easiest, though, is going to be War Hansa. Which, the quality of War Hansa, I've got a couple of their mechs. Um, like the Centurion. Or, I'm sorry, they call it Caligula. They're, they're pretty nice. They're pretty nice. I just don't really like the old school look of the Centurion. I, I like the MWO aesthetic for that mech. I think it looks good. see here just what my friends are willing to put up with rules uh, oh so you're going to do time of war well, that'll be nice so you're going whole hog I mean you're going to be doing a campaign and tying it in with the RPG my hat is off to you you have a lot more ambition than I do We, we sometimes have trouble just getting people together just to play a simple game on a Saturday. I know there's a couple people that in our group that really want to do like uh, Battle Force and go crazy amounts of um, bookkeeping, which is fine. I kind of want to do a campaign where you do crazy amounts of bookkeeping. But it kind of crosses over into territory of that's actually work. <laughs> so I don't think a lot of people want to do it. Or deal with it. How do I want to get these legs posed? I mean, standing is just so static. This one's walking. And this guy's actually pinned all the way up from ankle all the way up to hip. Every step of the way was pinned for the legs. It was a, it was a chore. Maybe we'll come back and do that later. I don't know if I really want to pin that right now. I don't think I want to like have start having hand cramps.
Let's see here. Let's work on our new friend a little bit. So like I said, uh, my buddy paid a commission painter to get this painted, and it's the guy just did red. Looks like he sprayed red, probably with an army painter red spray, um, and then just picked out gold highlights with a thinned down color of copper gold here, like on the heat sinks, the back, and like in between the guns. That's the cockpit jeweling. Um, and with what he paid for it, I would be really, I would be very angry. But he ended up deciding that he didn't want to deal with it. And so I got a good deal on all the mechs in the company. But we're going to fix it. We're going to salvage that mech. Oh boy. So for the areas that need primer, I'm gonna use Stano Reds surface primer. And I have hobby ADD, I will jump from project to project. Which is it's a miracle anything gets done. It's an absolute miracle. got Imperial Assault Stormtroopers that are like begging to be finished. Okay. So I am just going to prime over those exposed metal bits. And I broke apart the hip there with the legs to reposition it so he wasn't in such a sad position or sad pose rather. The sad, sad, sad little avalanche. Sweet. So that's going to dry before I do anything with him. My new buddy. He's now recently glued together. Um, there it is. Let's go ahead and prime him. I don't want that primer to go to waste. Oh! Bad is not even the word. It's like that whole it gave me cancer thing. It's pretty bad. I should I should show you some of the others. I don't want to shame the guy that painted it. Uh, I want to be very because I've met him in real life. Um, but it's I'm just saying like if I would have paid for it, I probably would have flipped my shit. I am not a master painter, but I know how much commission painting costs and what you should get for the dollar that you spend. My buddy ended up paying close to double per mini, the cost of each mini. for that job, I mean, where it's basically spray 
and then two other colors and you're not going to even wash the miniature that's just poor Now, I normally I would airbrush this stuff on, but my airbrushes don't want to work because my compressor has died. Or I would go outside and use my spray cans, but it's 30 degrees outside and flipping April. So that's a no-no. I could spray in my garage, but I don't want to be high. because I could wear a mask but as soon as I leave the garage I come into this room, the hobby room those fumes just come right in I'll be like the colors, oh the colors, I see all the colors Now this Donald Ranch stuff is my favorite brush on primer. It's expensive. It's made by Badger and Badger's pretty proud of their stuff. I think they have every right to be of this of this brush on primer though. I use Vallejo surface primer as well and it just forms like that rubbery skin over it and then just starts flaking off in chunks it's kind of a pain in the ass so I don't use that anymore Perhaps I should have not glued the torso on and painted them separately and then glued them in together at the end. Yeah, pretty much. 30 bucks. I mean... <laughs> no, no, again, and I don't want to bag on that painter. And it just, it's just, I, it's going to be like beating a dead horse. This, where it's just spray red, wash dry brush highlights, do the eyes and the gun that has so much more detail than that it's just sad just sad I'm going to do a whole video on it, on res basically rescuing and restoring those guys. They're all going to stay Draconis Combine though, and that'll fluff out my, my Drac stuff to 3145, and aside from a couple oddballs, I'll be set for the Drax.
That is until I decide to do the entire run of Sorens and Sabres from 3025 all the way to present day. Which that has crossed my mind. That Loctite's amazing stuff. I mean, I just glued this guy like 20 minutes ago. I am painting on him. He hasn't fallen apart yet. Knock on wood. Good stuff. That's what she said. Oh, I'm so funny. Yep, Iota Galaxy. Yep, yep. The only thing I'm really missing are the decals for the like the unit logo and then like uh, the clan logo. I haven't decided if I'm actually going to order them, but I purposely left space on that Warhammer 2C, and I'll do the same thing for the Savage Coyote and the. Um, tomahawks here that I can actually add those on. And what's kind of amusing to me is I'll be painting these flames on these mechs, which I don't know why I decided to do that. That's insane. Um, I'll be also going back and doing what I like to call George Lucas Special Editions on all my Sea Foxes or Diamond Shark assets to bring them up in line to how I currently paint. Um, I painted a lot of them about six years ago, and uh, I actually really despise how they look now. I'm embarrassed of how they look. And, but I painted them with how I painted back then, six years ago. And so I want to bring them up to date. So that uh, Thresher, uh, while he's not an update, because he was a fresh paint. That's going to be more of the style. So they're all going to be like Sigma Galaxy. Um, from Clan Diamond Shark. And then I'll keep that scheme going over. For my 3145 stuff. As their uh, Clan Sea Fox. Even though Sigma Galaxy doesn't exist. The paint scheme... Probably will transfer over. Who doesn't want a bright aqua blue body with neon green pants and purple arms? So stylish. Yeah. Like, I've got um, in baggies over on my game shelf a lot of the mechs that I need for Sorensen's. I'm just really missing the unseens that were in there. And I was when we when they originally were gonna do the the classics years ago, I was so hot to try those like oh finally gonna get a war or a um a Marauder and all that other stuff. And then again Harmony Gold rears its ugly head and They're doing well in their court case. They're about to get their asses thrown out. But yeah, Sorensen Sables, uh, Sables, yes, they're they're brushes. They're they're a lance of BattleTech brushes. Now, um, Sorensen Sabers, that's my Drac uh, unit. The Fox's Teeth is my Davian unit. Uh, then I am I almost have every single mech uh, out of the Fox's Teeth. Uh, book as well so I could do that Davian side almost through the entire run of that unit uh, in history which would be great to run scenario play or at a convention or even as a special game to record or just play for funsies it would be really cool to use those in a scenario Uh, 
All right. Almost done priming him. The one thing you'll notice if you ever do use this product and you're using it as a brush on capacity, um, it will sometimes dry and then leave like little spots. So you just got to go back and touch up. I'd assume that's the same for any primer. I just I didn't, I haven't experienced that with the Vallejo where it just gets caked on and becomes rubberized almost immediately. Just a little bit more on the top. Cool. Oh, nope, not cool. Get in there. Cover that. Okay. So I got a question for you guys. And it's um, part of the reason I wanted to do a live stream today. What the hell am I going to do with this? This is a Nova 2, a Black Hawk 2. Um, a Dark Age variant. It's awful. I hate the design. I don't know why I bought it. I'm an idiot. Um, it's just alien looking. It looks like it belongs more in Zoids than... Or Dino Riders or something like that more than anything else. What would you do? What would you paint that? Would you want to do it, put in a unit? If so, what unit would you like to throw it in? Uh, the garbage could also be considered a unit. I would almost toss this in the garbage. Um, but it's been sitting on my shelf on the to-do list for a long time, and I just want to get it gone. So, suggestions. That'd be great. Uh, suggestions on the best way to get started with assembly and paint. Been fluffing RPG heavy for two decades. Well... Uh, as far as with assembly and paint, uh, let's tackle assembly. If you're putting together plastic minis, the only thing you need is clippers and a hobby knife and a good glue. Uh, and depending on the plastic, you could either use like a plastic cement or super glue. I normally go with Loctite. It works for everything. If you're assembling metal miniatures, you still want a good, really good hobby knife, but you also want to get a set of metal files, diamond files rather, and that's to get rid of mold lines. You know, to sand them down on the metal miniature. You will have mold lines on a metal mini. It's just going to be a fact of life. It just depends on how much you can live with them. Sometimes they're really not that bad, and sometimes they add a little bit of extra detail to the paneling of the miniature, and then sometimes when the miniature is miscast, or the molds slip or shift, you'll get like a bigger gap or noticeable mold line. And that's when you want to sand down and then like put something like green stuff to help fluff it out or fix the, um, the gap. As far as painting goes, um... I would stay with acrylic paints. I would stay away from enamels. I don't like enamels. That's just my own personal thing. If you have, it's if you, it, as far as like what paints to buy, everybody's got different opinions. I, I have Vallejo. I, I have Citadel, P3, and Reaper paints as well. Where's Reaper? Reaper. Reaper's really cool because it's made in Texas. It's made in the U.S., so I love that. Um, I always try to buy and made in the U.S. where I can. Um, they all kind of behave the same way. You could get away with just buying, like, Apple Barrel stuff from Walmart or Michaels. The only thing about that paint is you want to thin it down just a little bit. You, you want to put some water in there, some, um, some thinner because it's really thick. It's like spreading glue on your miniatures. If you don't thin that stuff down, you're going to obscure a lot of detail. But the best way to get started or looking at techniques, which is really the key, is I would watch uh, the Camo Specs videos on the Camo Specs channel. 
they've got some really good uh, tutorials on there. And then also, and I know this is gonna, this may sound crazy, but the Warhammer TV channel. They've got a couple painters on there that, while they're painting, yeah, their Age of Sigmar or Warhammer 40k stuff, the techniques that they show you, and the the basics and fundamentals that they they throw out there are really really super useful. My painting, um, did not improve until I started watching those videos. Those have been the key for me to improve, is actually watching those games workshop bids. So I can't recommend them enough. So I would say just get, as far as tools go, your basic hobby knife, exacto, some files, just in case you start doing metal minis. You probably would want a pin vise too, so you can do pinning. Uh, those are in kits. Uh, I don't have my pin vise handy, otherwise I'd show you. But I'm sure you might know what a pin vise is, I would assume. Um, and then just a really good glue and that's really all you need to put together and then the patience is another big thing don't uh, expect you know the you're painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel on your first go set really realistic expectations on the results you want move up um, and go from there you can do really awesome effects and achieve really great results just by doing a base coat, a wash, and a reapplication of the base coat, and then edge highlighting. And you can make any miniature look really, really good. Um, I believe it was Alchies in one of his videos. He was talking about how he doesn't really care, or at the time he really didn't care about making the miniatures look fantastic because at the end of the day these are game pieces they're being played if you're playing to like for competition painting that's a whole different story but you're looking at a miniature that you just want to be able to tell what it is from you know three feet above the table where you look down on it and if that if your miniature looks really good from table distance to eye then you succeeded if you pull up the miniature really close, you can really start seeing any type of imperfection you wanted. Like, ah, right there, there's a little variance in that gray. You know, it, it just really depends on what you, what you want and where you want to go with it. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, I think he is going to go in the trash. That stinking... That mech is ugly. Uh, hi, Cause. Have you heard anything about the new starter pack? I think the release date is decided, but my memory isn't the most reliable attribute. Oh, flamers. I'm, oh, man. Blackhawk 2 is ugly. Um, As far as I know, I think it's September is when it drops. I think it drops in September. Both of the new box sets... Uh, I keep checking the internet distributor sites that I've got access to, um, and nothing's showing up there, but I know, like, Aries Games and Miniatures, he's doing pre-orders on it, uh, and I believe Catalyst might be too, question mark? Don't take that as gospel. I'm not sure on Catalyst, but I know Aries is doing it, and that's actually where I'm going to be pre-ordering my sets from. I think I'm going to get two of the basic set at first and uh of the big set two of the big set and then later down the road get two more i don't want to buy four all in one go and then be overwhelmed with crap to paint i already have enough crap to paint but i just really want the locus i really want to do a lance of locus no problem i'm pretty much an open book when it comes to questions man so ask away anytime um, foot sore miniatures. I haven't checked them out. Let me do that now. Since I'm, let's see here. Foot sore miniatures. And I will keep them bookmarked to watch. Oh, see, so they do historicals. It looks like. 
Well, son of a gun, they've got a... Okay, I will watch this. They've got a tutorial on how to paint a horse. I cannot paint a horse to save my life. I've got a crap ton of Pegasi and... Um, Elven uh, Warhammer Fantasy uh, High Elf horses to paint. And I need to get that done. That's awesome. Thank you for the recommendation, Michael. I really appreciate that. All right. So this is dry now. It doesn't take too long for that stuff to, to dry, which is good. Let's see here. All right. I'm going to move this piece of trash. I'm going to move these other fine pieces of metal. Fine gentlemen. It's pain a little bit. Like I said, I got hobby ADD. So, it's my wet palette. I got a little bit of parchment paper in there. Let's hose this down a little bit more. Here we go. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that this next application of paint is thin enough that it doesn't obscure the detail but I want to make sure it's got a good base coat because most of it already has like red on it I could choose like a, a better red on there um, or I could do a darker base coat of red with like the corn red I am gonna roll the dice because I don't know if really going four or five layers on top. It's really worth it. I don't want to ruin it. So any type of like air paint is already thinned down. And so my by me putting it on this sweat palette's kinda of like overkill. But Like I said, I want it to be thin. I don't care about th multiple thin coats because that's what you want to do anyway. But I don't want to ruin the miniature in obscure detail. And yeah, I'm going back over anything that he painted metal too with red. he's going to require multiple coats that cockpit jeweling oh man so good so good that's, that's award winning thick Lord Duncan would not be pleased two thin coats two thin coats
I'm almost just really like dry brushing it on, kinda, or wet brushing it on. I guess that would be the term. Maybe. I'm sure that is a term. Highly scientific paint tutorial here. Much better red. Much more vibrant. It's kind of like a dull red, or I mean, that was before. Yep, yep. those booties. I probably should have painted those booties a base coat. That's alright. So I am going to be caking on a little bit more paint on those those feet, but then I'll cheat on the back end if the detail's too obscured when I go to weather the mech. And when I weather the mech, it'll just it'll look alright. dry for a little bit glazing yeah you're probably right if you buy something you get a free berserker how can I pass that up who doesn't want a free berserker Professional painter, I am not. Let's see here. I almost forgot one tool, and while that's drying, I ended up snagging this guy right here for mold line removal. Um, it was really, really cheap on Amazon. Normally, I would never buy any of Citadel's tools, but this was at a price I couldn't pass up. It was like ten bucks. So ten dollars for a hobby tool, I'm cool with. But I know they sell like disposable razor ones that you could put in like Exacto and all that jazz, so that would work too. All right. So let me grab another example. fall over I don't care move this for a moment and then grab this guy so this is the mad cat 2 this is the 4 uh, variant I believe let me see if I can get the light a little bit better yeah much better so it's got the two or the four ER large lasers and then the uh, 
the missile pods up top. I like the pose that it's in where it's like hunched down. Like it's at an angle, like it's about to pick on somebody. I think that's cool. But the, the scheme is just very Iron Man with the red and the gold. Not, not my favorite. And then this is my Mad Cat 2 that I recently finished for my Diamond Sharks. And that's the stock model. That's the Prime. It's just night and day. If I was selling commission painting, if I was actually doing commission painting again, to me this is a basic paint, paint job. This is like twenty dollar paint paint job. I might be under pay, paying myself by that, but twenty bucks for that, I don't know. Beat that dead horse. Oh, it's up to twenty. I'm glad I got it then. But yeah, Mad Cat, Akuma, uh, oh my gosh, an Odachi, and a Roku Kubi. These guys are on the all on the list of things to do to repair and fix. So he already looks ten times better, in my opinion. What did I think of the Dark Age Mad Cat Mark IV? Oh, the Savage Wolf? Let's do a brief detour here. So, I celebrate the entire Mad Cat catalog. We've got the standard Mad Cat. This is the plastic one from the intro box set. Then I've got the Mad Cat Mark II. The awesome Mad Cat Mark III. And then the Mad Cat Mark IV. I'd like it. I think the pose is pretty cool. However, for anybody who's curious about buying one of these beauties, or the Vulture Mark IV for that matter, these joints that connect the arms and the, the hip joints, you better pin the shit out of it and use the strongest glue known to man because just handling this thing, it wants to fall apart. I've repaired those hips and those arms at least, I'd say about four or five times each. And they keep falling off. And then whenever they fall off, i got to sand, re-drill, and just start the whole process over again. It's a pain in the ass. Great looking model, but pain in the ass. And then <clears throat> I have a MechWarrior Online Mad Cat that I'm working on. So, so reality... I could field a whole star of Mad Cats. Yay! Mad Cats! Good stuff. I just wish they had a, um, a Mad Cat 5. Give it time, though. They probably will. That Vulture 4 is a lot more fiddly than that Savage Wolf. It will fall apart on you. Kind of sad. All right, I don't want to lose those. Those go over there. Clear that off. All right. Got so much crap on the table now. Alright.
do one more coat. Want it nice and vibrant and red. Get up in there. And if PGI keeps moving the timeline forward, I look forward to eventually having some of these Dark Age mechs in that game. Come on, more paint, more paint is needed. Okay, that, got, that has to dry. Did you check the Fun Again games going out of business sale? Um, no. Sung minis. Wool Sung. And now I gotta go check this out. Oh, it's Micro Arts. Oh, I didn't want to. No, 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 no. Yes, that's what I want. Great. Oh, so Victorian era steampunk that's in the vein of Malifaux. Interesting. That is pretty interesting. I don't know if I could... I think I'd have to pass. I think I would have to pass. While those miniatures aren't as scary as the... And I say scary with quotation marks. Um, as uh, Malifaux stuff. It's That's not really my cup of tea, though. Those are some pretty nice sculpts, though. Pretty darn nice sculpts. Alright. What 
is that? A spot that was missed? Apparently. It's either that or a rock. And it's painted now. Okay. Elves. Who doesn't like elves? I'm actually really excited for the Games Workshop Sea Elves that are coming. Uh, the Idoneth Deepkin. Very excited for those. Let's see here. I'm letting that mech dry for a second while I check something. Apologize, guys. Let's see here. Uh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I, the uh, the miniatures that I kind of jump at me though are the. The Ash and Oak, uh, especially that club starter where you get the old man in the wheelchair, that's kind of amusing to me. Not that people in wheelchairs are amusing, but... Um, I just for, for a miniatures game, it's, it's an interesting choice. I'll just say that. Elven Yard. Oh, that's cute. It's like Scotland Yard, but with elves. I get it. That's pretty cool, actually. Some pretty cool stuff. Interesting. Alright. Now, how did I do? I want to say I painted it green. On, uh, yep. I sure did. Okay, so cockpit needs to be a dark green. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is paint in the cockpit uh, gunship green. It's a model air color from Vallejo. Just one little dab. There we go. That's all I need. No more, no less. Okay. And I'm using a small layer brush from Games Workshop. But anything with a point would be good. And if I touch the edges, I'm going to go back and clean that up when I do highlights anyway, so I'm not too worried. But I still want to be as neat as possible just to get in the lines. Because it's an air paint, like I said, it's already thinned down. So I'm going to have to do multiple thin coats. Because it hit that wet palette, so it's got to dry. But because it has water in it... Oh, see you, Trevor. Have a good one.
Thanks for hanging out for a little bit. Let's see here. What else can I work on while that guy's drying? I, no, I'm not doing that mech. I refuse to do that mech. It's not happening. So uh, I got a piranha here. Let's go ahead and base that son of a bitch up. Use Thousand Suns Blue here. Apply that to the palette. Because he's a small Mac, should be fine. Good old little piranha. Little guy's a lot of fun to play in MWO. Gotta dry. Transition back to the cockpit here. Probably another another light over here. Live and learn for the next time. All right. So other things I'm going to be using is going to be known oil here, and I did move it from into a dropper bottle from your traditional GW bottle. Which is a lot easier to control that way. I also did that with my Lamia Medium. It was just it's just way easier. Found I was wasting too much. But once that green dries on the cockpit, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the non oil and add a couple drops of water to it, thin it down, and then cover the entire avalanche in it. And then go back with a brighter red to brighten things up. And it's probably going to either be, let's see here, it's going to be the Evil Sun Scarlet. And then I'll do edge highlights of either the Wild Rider Red or this orange here. The Luganoth Orange. I haven't decided yet. He's going to look better. The, the Avalanche is going to look better than the um, Wendigo I just put up. That Wendigo was actually painted a year and a half ago. So, um, and I actually was pretty insecure about putting him up on the, the, the spotlights just because of how old the paint job was. Um... Like any good artist, I am pretty insecure when it comes to my art. Well, good. Like any artist, I'm insecure about my art. I am not good. 
Um, okay. So that looks dry. I have to get another piece of parchment paper here in a minute. So three drops. And one, two, three. I'm just, oop, four snuck in. No! All right, that's fine. But, if you can see that, capillary action is actually pulling the green in because it touched. So pulled some of that green paint in. Mm. Mm. Oh no. Let's see what it looks like on the cockpit. Yep. Nope, not doing it. Not doing it. I don't want a green on that mini. So I just used a paper towel to suck up all of that wash. Let's try again. One, two, three. Okay. Sweet. Actually, let's try it this time with two drops of Lamia Medium and one drop water. Much better. Yep, so just wash the entire mini. I want it to be dark, but I don't want it to be too dark. I just want it to pick out the panels. That black ink is just going into the recesses. And I don't want it to pool, so I am cleaning up as it pools. missed some cockpit space on the side of the avalanche. I'll have to go back and fix that. It's okay though. Never paid it I wasn't paying attention to the sides of the cockpit. So let the pop. Come on. Pop you. Pop. Cool. That should be about 15 minutes to dry. And because it's on the wet palette, if I need to apply more, 
I'll be able to. And it'll stay fresh without drying out. Let's go back to my friend the piranha here. So first base coat. It's alright. It's a dark blue. Let's go ahead and with another coat of that blue, that Thousand Suns Blue. And this is just the base coat. This is um, not going to be the color that's used on his armor. There'll be blues and greens and purples, but it will not be this blue. I just need a blue that's kind of dark to give a good base. Because painting over straight black, that's a pain in the ass. At least with blue, it makes it look a lot darker. Cool. Ugh. And I know you're from the UK, George, because you said Dettol. We don't have that here in the States. Ugh. Oh, that's unfortunate. Though. It's so heartbreaking, though. I I've been there. It's like you, you the, when you do your last one, then you go look at the first one you did, and you're like, Ugh. I learned so much. And now this is all trash. And you just get disgusted. It's always just sad. It's it's heartbreaking. I've got some miniatures sitting in simple green right now that have been in simple green for as I check my non-imaginary watch months, maybe a year I'll get back to them at some point at some point this is still drying dry faster you you're almost there. So for the piranha, and this is what I use for all my diamond sharks. If I can find the base coat, the next layer, where it be? What are next? Okay. It's the Deep Ocean from Reaper. That'll be next. And then the next um, coat will be Marine Teal. And then the highlight or edge highlighting will be Surf Aqua. And you can get these three. They sell them in triads where you can get three complementary colors or your base, your edge, your highlight, and all that crap all together in one go. Conveniently, they're all they're numbered in sequential order, so 76, 77, and 78. That makes it easy. That, isn't that new Shadowhawk, though, a dream? Oh my god, that new Shadowhawk. It's, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous model. All right. 
right, so let's go ahead and apply one coat of that deep ocean while we wait for that other to dry. Come on. You almost out? You're clogged. Okay. And then I'll actually make a custom wash too of that deep ocean um, to wash the the top layer too instead of using like a black wash, which would be nice. That's got to be my favorite thing I've discovered now is making custom washes out of paints. All you need is thinner or water and your paint and you're good to go. Just make sure you write down your recipes. Be the next upgrade is I'm going to figure out how to attach light to the top of my rig here. I think maybe some LED strip lighting. I made my own little overhead camera rig, and I think that'll be the the next thing. I so. If you need me to justify your purchase, Michael, I mean, I can do that easily. It's a mech that's holding a an axe and a shield. It's a mech holding an axe and a shield. Why wouldn't you buy that? That's my question. Why wouldn't you get it? It sounds to me that that is a must-buy. Otherwise, your life will not be complete. Um, and then George says, I found it. Needed a bit of cleaning up. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of filing on that. And on my second Shadowhawk, I had to use some green stuff, unfortunately. Um, you had an order from the States. Oh, man. So you're going to be paying oh, that shipping. That sweet, sweet shipping. Yeah. Uh, licensing issues between Ralpartha and the UK. Yeah, I was wondering about that because they're the the Ralpartha UK actually has some mechs that Iron Wind doesn't have, namely the Hellhound, the uh, the the unseen Hellhound. Uh, and I bought I think two or three of them from Ralpartha. Cause I was like, I, I don't want him to get yanked. I, I need, I need some. I need these. But I'll say this: I, I've ordered from both Ralpartha Europe 
and Iron Wind, and my shipping from Europe was faster. It may have been a fluke. But I've only ordered from Iron Wind once, and Ralpartha once. So maybe Iron Wind had to cast my miniatures. I, I don't know. But I was not impressed with the, the shipping. Especially with how much they, char they charge. What's next? What are next? Let's pick out the metallic bits. Get ready. So I'm going to be using Citadel Lead Belcher Air. It is a thin, thin metal. But what's great about it is because it's air, it's already been thinned. So get, putting it to the wet palette, I'm going to thin it down just a little bit more. There we go. Do the guns. And I'm gonna have to do the, like the heat shields and all that stuff as well. This is such a cool mech. I just need cool battle armor attached to it. We've got some Kanazuchis over there on the shelf. Oh, you got it from from Ares. Good man. Derek is pretty flipping awesome. He's so cool. It's pretty much where I get all my mechs now. There used to be a guy on eBay that I swear was selling them off the back of a truck. And they were just too cheap. It was like just too good to be true prices. And I guess they took them down. Or he stopped. But he was great. I mean, I got like a tripod. I got three tripods for like 15 bucks each. Because he put them up there as auctions and no one would bid on the tripods. So I've got an Ares, a Zeus, and I think a Hesphestus. And I, <laughs> I will say this. The tripods, if you've never put together one of those super heavy tripods, you're in for a treat. Because that's an absolute miserable experience. Absolute misery. And I've had that one Zeus painted. He just needs to be finished, but he's been in various states of completion for about three years now. I just can't be bothered to finish him. I'm never going to use him. 
And I have no idea why I went crazy and bought three tripods. I was like, oh, for that, that eventual campaign that I do. Nope. And considering only one faction really can take them, if you play by fluff, and that's the Republic of the Sphere, it kind of limits it. I like to bounce around between factions. I think those need to be painted. And there is some bleed over with the metal onto the red, but I'll fix that later. color to them. Wait for that to dry. So the piranha here, he's got these wrist machine guns. These little Popeye arms. And then we want to paint the barrels on his shoulders. Just the ends though, or the tips, just the tip. Do do do, there's a joke there. There's a joke, an easy joke, right there. Oh, well, that's cool. I never noticed it before. So, like, the machine guns that are going up and down his chest, they're actually connected to that rib cage that's on the back. Or ribs on his back. That's pretty cool. Sweet. And I think that's all the silver I'm going to do on this. All metallic. Just the guns. Thank you, sir. I wouldn't even want to touch an unseen Marauder. I had one of those plastic ones from the third edition box set, I think it was, and it snapped off at the ankle and the the leg. I was like, nope, nope, done. And then I had the chance to get the metal ones, and I'm like, nope, I'll pass. Sort of light, yeah. It's gonna be more more Draconis, more Drac goodness. Painting red versus blue. That'll be a 
That's a fair fight, right? A piranha versus a uh, avalanche? Nope. Alright. So. That metal is... Dry. And it looks just like the... Heat sinks on the back need a touch up. The gun barrels themselves look good. Do, 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 do. And that should do it. Especially when I go back over and I do the dry brush of the silver on top to help bring it up after a wash. Should be good to go. see y'all all right sorry for all the breaks i keep getting messages and i want to answer those questions too um I'm popular today on facebook which is something i never thought i'd say um so yes so we're gonna use evil sun scarlet Really good shake. I'm gonna switch my fancy brush. And one more dab. There we go. Dab, dab, dab. Then just one drop of water. And then begin the boring process of Putting paint on the Mac. Now, because I've thinned this down, it's it's gonna dry pretty thin. may need to do two coats but may not might may look out I'm just being very ginger, very gentle when it comes to around those missile tubes. Get 
get that chin. That chinny chin chin. I'm sorry I'm not talking much. Normally at this point I'm swearing at myself or going, why have you decided to do this with your life? Like, but it's fun. I'm going to leave that inside panel a little bit darker with the original color. Just give it a little more depth. And then same thing here with these little sprockets. I am going to just paint every other one and leave the ones in the middle untouched so it's a different color and then paint that under coming along I know the webcam is probably having trouble picking out the difference but there is a big noticeable difference to where it was and what it is now big difference What I need to do is figure out how to hook up weight wise that's what I need to figure out is my camera that I use to shoot the battle reports and such how to mount it up here without it falling over and stream with that but I would say for a first test run this new camera rig is going to work Pretty proud. Twenty dollar camera rig. Probably more like sixteen bucks, but And the back can be a little dirty too, so I'm not going to pretty that up too much. I mean, you figure that's where the grime and all that crap comes out. Well, that's that's where the exhaust is. Again, I'm leaving some of that darker red under it to give that illusion of depth I need 
decide what I'm going to do with this. Am I going to weather it up or, or not? May. The Wendigo isn't weathered, but... Of course, at this time and period, the Dragonus Combine is sitting pretty. They're looking pretty good, so they might have the time to sit there and repaint all their mechs in between every little skirmish as they're stomping through the uh, the Republic forces and Davian as well. So, um, as far as what's coming up, if I can finish this guy this weekend, uh, he'll be Monday or Wednesday. Uh, Piranha's coming up, working on him. Um, I got a Warhammer 2C coming up. Um, and I do have an, a MechWarrior Online Marauder as well. And that'll probably be Mondays, to be honest. Um... The King Crab was a big hit, so I'll do that. I've been really hesitant to show off my Mech Warrior Online sculpts just because of I'm a Catalyst demo team agent, and it's not a good idea to engage in that. But to be honest, I don't really do much with the demo team. Um. And my play group is pretty much the way it is, and we have monthly group like set you know meetings and such. So between the Facebook page and the YouTube channel, I can pretty much coordinate and get what I need to to organize us together. I don't really need to have an official title per se, um, and I really don't do it on behalf of Catalyst either. Uh, Yeah, I mean, so mentioning the third-party mechs is a big, big no-no. And to be honest, I am surprised I haven't been booted yet from the program. Which I would totally understand and not be upset over. I think there's multiple ways to support a community without being an official, you know, badge carrying member. And the Battle Tech community has been really awesome. Even when you have people that are crotchety and like, I don't want to play past 3025, which is fine. But. I've got about a dozen mechs that I could throw up there. I just have to get, you know, put brush to miniature and paint. And that's been tough. Because I'll get hobby ADD or I'll get focused on something else. Um, when it comes to, like, the battle reports, if I'm doing a battle report, it'll take me about a month to do one because I want to do something that's different and push the boundary of what a battle report can be. So like the intro that I did for Mercs versus Steiner, that took me about two weeks to get, get it to where I was actually happy with. Um, and that type of thing. I like to experiment. I like to, to make the most of what I have. I mean, I have a very old camera that I use to film. So I try to make the best of it, get the best angles, the best lighting with what I have. Um, I would love to have like a better camera, but those things cost money. So you got to make do with what you got. Do it on the cheap. And heck, if people like George Romero and other independent filmmakers can make real movies and entertainment with less, 
then I can sure as hell do battle reports and miniature spotlight videos with a lot less. I don't need the best of equipment. Just to keep pushing the quality and what I can. Control what I can. That being said, if I had if won the lottery tomorrow, I'd run out and buy like a $5,000 4K camera and just buy a bunch of rigs to hook it up. So you know what? We're doing multi-camera angle up in this piece. Boom. Just total overkill. That'd be pretty hilarious to see someone sit there and sink money into 4K red uh, cameras for battle reports. It'd be insane. And then of course you got to get the seventeen thousand dollar Mac uh, iMac Pro to edit on. So I mean, ideal setup would be three, you know, five, three five thousand dollar four K red cameras, the seventeen thousand dollar iMac Pro, and then. Um, Probably professional grade lighting, miking everybody, miking the table, miking a dice box. I mean, just go crazy. Boom. Spend a hundred grand on battle reports. I have no idea why my YouTube revenue is not covering the expenses. That all being said, if someone actually went through the trouble of doing that, as long as they knew what they were filming and they had the angles and everything planned out, it would look amazing. I feel like tabletop gaming's like on this this precipice of where oop, not the the rig, um, where it could break like video games did with like Twitch. I think it just you need somebody to like lead the way. You've got you know, video review sites like Beasts of War and all that, and those come a long way. And you got people that do great reviews, and um, and they put out quality product. But I think you're just missing one thing. And then you look at what's like going on Alpha with like the painting thing with Will Freddy and. Um, like the D&D sessions and Harmon Quest and you're getting a lot more exposure but you're just you're you're missing one thing one thing to break it and I thought Zombicide at one point was going to be that could have been it and I think it was in several ways with board games where it got people into board games Zombicide was a great gateway drug Yep, it's more about what you're shooting, not what you're shooting with. Exactly. Exactly. I could shoot the whole thing on an iPhone, and as long as I shot it competently, and the game was entertaining, and I and the editing was done well, um, you could you could make it work. I you could do it with a webcam. When I first started doing this, I was just so concerned about getting a camera upgrade right out of the bat, and I just borrowed my friend's camera. It took my wife really to calm me down and go, you know, you really don't need it. It's overkill. And after really thinking about it and looking at everybody else's channels and playing around with everything, it was. You have all these vloggers that are like, got upgraded to that new Panasonic G85 or whatever they're up to right now. 
or you got to get the latest Nikon with the built-in 200 times optical zoom so you can see the face of the moon. And while I admit that is pretty fucking cool, I don't really need that. The one thing I've noticed, like since buying that LED light, is 30 bucks increase the quality of the the spotlights tenfold it gave me consistent lighting so without going crazy and and breaking the bank and getting a divorce by stupid purchases um i was able to make those upgrades and, and get that jump in quality And I'm sure you can hear my puppies upstairs barking. Is it 5 o'clock yet? Oh, it's past 5 o'clock. I wonder if they've eaten. I bet you they have. I bet you they got their mom to do it. Boom. So edge highlighting. And to finish the cockpit. And typically I'll paint miniatures in solo fashion. I don't do batch painting. I try to do batch painting and it drives me crazy. I just did that with my stormtroopers for Imperial not for Imperial Salt, but for Legion. And it uh, made me cross-eyed, where it became work. Um, it just became a chore. And uh, I don't want the painting to be a chore. Because the end reward is to have a fully nice painted army on the table. So you're not playing with, like, primered minis or have a bunch of silver surfers on the table. And speaking of random MWO miniatures, there's the Black Knight. I meant to show him off. He's primed. He just needs to be based, painted. At some point, maybe. Maybe he'll get done. So, when I, we were painting, our friend the Avalanche had a random brush stroke that or two that went and painted red on his arm. I'm not too worried about that. I mean, it is on the metal, but Mr. Popeye Arms here is going to have purple arms anyway, so I think it'll be okay. Alright, so... Next color. I think I need more parchment paper, but I think I've definitely maximized my space. And that is that marine teal. Well, do the back, cover the back. And the head. Bring it down to the back.
And yeah, I'm using a dry brush to do this. Probably not the best idea, but I wanted a way to quickly get paint on him. Maximum surface area. And then I'll go back with the regular brush to hit his front since we got the machine guns and we don't want to put the blue over the machine guns. Oh, there's st stuff going on upstairs. If I hit it big, I'll definitely go ahead and get that set up. And you guys can see me play really poorly in 4K from multiple angles. I think it'll be great. I'm going to avoid putting paint on the teeths since the teeths have to be white. Paint that rib cage. But these paints are really nice. I, I love Reaper paints. Big fan. They coat pretty well, they thin easy. Huge color choices. Good stuff. Piranha. Piranha Piranha. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, uh, let me see. Sony A7s, twos are the current hot sauce for four Ks. I haven't even looked at those. Um, 
But yeah, Lord Machado. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pull up my Twitter and I'll look at it. Let's see here. Let me see if I can figure out how to do it real quick on the stream. Without throwing everything into chaos. Probably should get my shit set up for that. But why would I do that? That would require forethought. Uh, you know what? I'll do that in a future one where I'll get that set up where I can do that. Alright. Okay, um, so I'm looking at the 47th and 52nd Shadow Divisions that you got, Cody. I really dig the, um, the red and gold on the, I guess that's the 52nd. You got decals on there. The road detail on that Celestial is really nice. I don't know if I have a steady enough hand to paint those those lines on that on that road piece. I like it, and the battle armor looks sweet too. And then the green on the forty seventh battle armor. I like the green. It's a pretty vibrant green. I'd say my only critique is with how dark it is in the forefront of the photo on that first one with the the, the five battle armor, the 47th, it's hard to see the gray and the other details on there. But I can tell you painted something on their left breast on all those miniatures. I just can't tell what it is. But the green, though, on the arms and the wings looks... I, I really like that color. And I can tell that the body is a gray. But that's my only. That would be my only critique. Um, I, I. But on that second photo, I love the color combination of red and gold. Um, you've got the nice trim going. You got decals. You did a custom painted base, which is really awesome. And then there's that raptor too. Sneaky, sneaky little bastard. You even have stripes. That look, oh, yeah, you do. You got stripes. I will say this. I am pretty impressed with you doing that gold trim around the Raptor's cockpit. I don't know. I don't know how hard that would be for me. Because you got a nice, clear black line above and below it. And it doesn't bleed over into the cockpit or the red on the on the head at all. It's just clean. It looks clean. And that's awesome. Yeah, you did a really good job with your your shading. Just looks clean, bro. They're hand painted. Ho ho ho! Well, you get bonus points. I can't do that crap. Holy crap! They look like decals to me. That's sick, bro.
And it, that sucks about the chipping, too. I, I hate that. I hate that about metal miniatures. You sit there and have to varnish the stupid thing like 16 different times just on the off chance hope that they don't chip. Oh, but that's... You did good. I am going to share your Twitter, if that's okay, in the, the chat so everybody can see it. Um... But no, man, that, the 50, oh gosh, the 52nd looks great. And guess what? I am now following you. Boom. You just got another Twitter follower. Woo! Hey, Lorian. <laughs> well, <laughs> declogging the 3D printer for the millionth time. That sounds like me with my damn airbrush compressor and my airbrushes. A tool that's supposed to be useful and make your life easier is just a big old pain in the balls. Eventually, I will take the plunge on a 3D printer. Eventually. But it is not this day. Um, I want to do that cockpit. And how I want to do it. I done forgot how I did it on the others. So I'll wing it. Okay. So we did the Gunship Green Vallejo as the base color for the green cockpit and green is the complement for red yay Christmas colors so I'm gonna use a warp stone glow citadel so you didn't use a shader on that Lord Machado you actually either used a like an art pen or did you actually use a brush with with paint to do that or did you paint around all of the the panels black? I mean, it just, uh, ugh, no. Either way, you're making my head hurt. I don't want to do any of that. No. A little bit of water. A little bit of warp stone glow. Then your paints. Then your paints, Josh. Come on. Yep, and any mistakes I make, I will correct later. I am the king of fixing it in post-production. I would give George Lucas a run for his money. Or maybe. Dry, dry. Where to Blake? I don't know. If you take out the whole, if you take out the whole like wanting to nuke everybody just because you're gonna lose aspect of it. The word of Blake isn't any worse than anyone else in the universe. It's just when you start dropping nukes on everybody because things are going south for you, that's where the problem lies. Let's 
see here. I really want that to be done so I can keep going on the next step, but I can't. No. Oh, Shizer. I never got that inside of that leg. It's too busy gabbing. Gabbing, gabbing, gabbing. Get that inside real quick. Talking, having a good time, being distracted. Not getting anything done. It's good. Base coat. God. You worked up. Ooh. Ooh. My, my hat is off to you, sir. Nope. That's a big ball of nope for me. I would not do that. Ooh. So... Let's go back to that tomahawk that we primed earlier. He's going to need a second coat because you can see where the silver bleeding through. If I get it here in the light. Maybe. I'm looking at my screen here, my monitor. But yeah, it's, it's bleeding through. So he needs a second coat of primer um, in some areas. So I'll do that later, but... I cannot wait to unleash this ATM monster out in Classic Battletech. And this guy is going to rip face. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. All right, so here's what's going to happen. i got to go to the bathroom. But I'm also going to grab a new piece of parchment paper so I can swap out my paints. So I will be right back. Got to mute the mic, um, and I'll be right back.
And I'm back. All right. Let's get more water in there. And there we go. Witchcraft. Stay put. Stay put. Well, the good news is I think that cockpit's dry. So let's go ahead and apply the second layer. And I'm making a point not to fill in the entire thing with the new green. I wanted that old green, the darker gunship green to poke out a little bit. See how well this turns out. Alright. Boom. Boom. Now it makes this next color very convenient, which is moot green. It's the color that will be go going into the cockpit to finish it, but it will also be going on the legs of the piranha here. This is going to take multiple coats. Multiple thin coats. As Lord Duncan, Lord and Savior, demands it. One drop of water. Maybe one more scoop. So going by the rest of my clan max goes up to the knee, the green. And then once the this green has dried, I'm going to take some of that and add some of the Lamia medium to it to help start creating the fade going up past the knee, up to the mid-thigh. Yep. Normally I would use an airbrush for this, but... Okay. I'm not bitter. 
Not at all. And then, for the Popeye arms, we're going to use Reaper Imperial Purple. Go ahead and put Camp right there. Sigma Galaxy represent. Purple Popeye arm. At least I'm not painting like their crotch is purple or something like that. That'd be a little lewd. think after I get done painting tonight I've earned the right to watch some Babylon 5 maybe I think I want to get another piranha here and then like reposition his arms. It was only like eight bucks, so maybe down the road. Let's see if I can make it a little bit brighter. That's true. Dry brushing does give you a good fade. You just have to be good enough to control the dry brushing. Um, but I might try that. I think he's just so small, though, that it may not be worthwhile. I don't know. I'm also very tempted, and this breaks the color scheme. But, I mean, heck, I'm not going for camo specs or anything like that. I may paint these ribs in a bone color. I think I'm going to do that. I think that would look good. It would break up the back, give a little bit more detail to the miniature. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what we're going to do. Fuck it. We'll do it. Have you seen the tactic car Duncan's disappointment? <laughs> no, I have not. Well, may, yeah, actually, I have. I have seen it. I have seen it. Now I remember. Yeah, I saw it. I think in the Age of Sigmar group on Facebook. So for bone, I need Xandri Dust. Or can I cheat? Can I cheat? What do I got? That's close. That can go right off the bat. 
We got moldy skin from Reaper. Bleached bone from Vallejo. That's actually shit. That's garbage. I need to throw that bottle away. I'll never use that again. Um. Then I got mummy from Minotary. You know what? I'll stick with what my gut is that tells me. So Xandry Dust. fingers Sloppy. It was sloppy. Should be ashamed. You have failed. You have failed this city. And I have no idea when I'm ever going to run this Piranha, but I just wanted it. This was an impulse buy. Whittle Piranha. Whittle, whittle Piranha. If I had any musical talent whatsoever, I would just write a song. About the Whittle Piranha. Looks like crap now, but the bone will be better as it dries and layer up. As a skull, too. You know what? That's a good idea. I'll paint the skull the bone white, too. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, seeing as my logo is Metal Gear Solid inspired... What mech would you pair with Solid Snake? Um, well. Obviously Metal Gear. Uh, let's not be a smartass. What mech? Snake's all about infiltration um, and being stealthy, obviously. It's, it's stealth action espionage, tactical stealth action espionage game. I think it's with Under Metal Gear Solid, the first one, um, was the tagline. But it's something that can bite you. I mean, because he can attack. So, but the game rewards you the more stealthy you are, rather than how many firefights you get in. Unless you play Metal Gear Solid 4, and that goes right out the window. Um, it's almost impossible to not get into fights in that game. I would say... Probably something that is a lighter medium. He's not a heavy fighter. 
he's going to want to zip around and be fast and get the hell out. So, yeah, I think... Maybe a raven. And that actually would be kind of funny. But, uh... But probably a raven. Because you could slap some ER large lasers on that sucker and snipe, but you have the ECM to keep you hidden. Um, and you obviously give it stealth armor, too. So, yeah, probably a stealth armored ECM raven. That'd be my call. This piranha is now my hero mech. Anytime you see it in a bat rep, that's my alter ego. My tabletop alter ego running around in it. Of course, if he gets blown up, well, there's a critical headshot. That'll be the end of him. No more. Never be run again. Getting those teeth. Teeth. I need to stop talking like an orc. Teeths. Get those teeths. like a fight, fight like an orc. Yep. I think it'll look good. It'll look different. Something that can't jump and <laughs> can punch and kick. Well, yeah, you know what? That's probably the best bet is a hex base with a single box. drying let's get that green in the cockpit try something different with the cockpit
<laughs> Got the best killer cans. I'd want to play orcs. You didn't have to paint so damn many of them. It's my only... It's why I kind of gravitate towards the elite armies in 40, like 40k or Age of Sigmar. It's like, less I gotta paint? Sure. I'm good with that. I am perfectly... Okay, with not having to paint a bunch of crap. Nice, put a little bit of white in each lens there. Okay, so go back to my black wash from earlier. I'm gonna wash these guns. On the guns, I really don't care that it lays on thick. You can always explain it away as soot or dirt from the exhaust to firing it or the oil. At least in my mind. Makes sense to me. Yep, and all over that heat sink on the back end here. Cool. And that'll dry. Once that gets done dry, I hit it with a dry brush of not my forearm, but I have a dry brush paint somewhere. Yeah, the Necron compound. I'll do that. That's true. He does have all the DACA. Although, in MechWarrior Online, I really like taking the Piranha, I think it's the 2, that runs it all with, I think it's got 13 or 12 laser spots in it. Oh, that's awesome. Sitting up there with micro pulse lasers and just chewing away armor. to this guy all right so the next color is your shopty bone from citadel there's like no rhyme or reason to how i put these on the palette either so if you're like thinking like oh he's got a strategy he Got no idea. I should probably plan these things out more. Probably.
So let's be careful. Probably should put a little bit more paint in that palette, but. Oh well. It'd be pretty awesome to actually finish these two on the stream. That'd be great. And then you're looking at the next two spotlights. Like boom boom. Just got to do the research and write the script. I actually did something different the last two um, spotlights. Normally I have a script in place when I when I go to do the re recording of the voiceover work. This past, the last two times I didn't. I just did it all from memory. And um, I would say that I think the... It wasn't the... The Wendigo was a lot more stiff. Um... It was a lot more stiff doing the Wendigo. It just felt more awkward. Shit. Got a little bit of bone on the blue. I'll have to go back and touch that up. Shit, shit, shit. being very light with putting this shopty bone over the sandry dust I'm pretty much just dragging it over trying to leave some of it behind um, so it's just not completely covered up but let's see how all that works Yep, got those tooths. Got those tooths. All right, cool. And actually, in looking at it, I think I need to get these shoulder ones too, but they don't really form the rib cage, so eh, it's okay. <laughs> when the when DACA fails, use the choppas. When the choppas fail, use more DACA. When all that fails, send in to kill a cans. We got that the piranha's head there i need to do the internal camera and actually the internal or i'm sorry the view screen and the window's actually in between the teeth um it's not the eyes it's there and i know i've seen online i think on camo specs version they've got it as red 
I guess I can go with that. I go start with Mephiston Red Air. This is a very, very light, thin coat. More of a, so watered down, it's more of a glaze. But I just wanted to put that color in there to start the process. Back to the Wendigo, or the Avalanche. Oh no, I said Wendigo. Okay. Go ahead. I'll do that dry brush. And I'm actually going to cover this up here for the time being. There we go. And you. Where is my dry brush brush? Where is the dry brush brush? See here, dry brush brush and paper towel. Anybody out there see Ready Player One? If so, what'd you think of it? Yay, so shiny and so chrome. I really hope you go back in with some black to add cracks in the skull and flush out the look of the skull more. Yep, I plan on it. That I do plan on. Yeah, it's not going to stay that way. Um... That's actually the next step. I was waiting for that to dry. I'm going to go hit it with a wash. And then um, once that dries, put the highlight color on, which is the Screaming Skull. And then do the eyes last. I think that's the best course of action. So... Agrax Earth Shade. Yes, Agrax Earth Shade. Which 
I need to put in a dropper bottle. Washes are really like cheating, but I don't feel bad about using them. Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. his nose. I'm going to just put more crap on his nose. That's fine. And then, not to waste this, I'll use the Agrax Earth Shade to shade all the guns. But I'm going to have to go back and touch up the guns anyway. It'll be okay. Ballistic glass. Hmm. Let's see here. I'm going to take some of this Bealteen green shade. to it and a drop of water and it probably just made a thinning in camo shade but I feel be better about it because I made it and I am just popping it in there to that glass cockpit there it is on oh, the avalanche. Help bring a little bit of definition to those corners of it. Yay, that was worth it. This is where batch painting comes in handy because you could do multiple mechs. Not waste any paint. Good job. Good job. Oh, flame one flash. I don't need that. Need screaming skull. Sorry, I'm not talking. I'm, I'm on a mission now. When I start hitting the home stretch and painting, I stop dicking around. Because I can see the 
see the end. And it gets me excited. It's like, I'm almost done. I don't have to paint anymore. Till the next time. Stockholm Syndrome. Do a painting. Liking it, liking it. I like the ribs. Boom. I think it looks good. Then we got to do white highlights on top of that. It never ends. It never ends. And this is the uh, Reaper Factory White. And I'm just going to go and do extreme edge highlighting here. And then it just dawned on me. The bone stuff's going to be done, but the rest of the armor is not going to be. Sadness. It's okay. I think you guys can see it maybe I have a tendency to get like really hunched over the small details so I apologize guys there we go and I will figure out how to get more light on this thing so and it also may just be a limitation of the webcam. So. But it looks good. Good suggestion. Yeah. Dig it. It's different. It is different. That's true. Um, for this upcoming campaign, I have 36 units of tanks. Oh, God. Yeah, all of drab and then hit it with a brown wash and then walk away. Just walk away. Walk away. Just walk away. What I did is I just added Lamia Medium, two drops. Because I'm going to start working on that fade on the legs there. I want 
it to be up to the mid thigh, so. Multiple coats. that dry you're right it never ends it and the moment that you finish painting all your miniatures is the moment you die that's 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 the end of a war gamer because you only finish when you're dead it's kind of gruesome but true So, for Mr. Avalanche here, got some decals. And just so I don't drop any of these in the water, which would be, that would be awful. Let's see here. There we got him. So, we got our numbers. And then for our friend the Piranha, the Diamond Shark, and Sigma. So they just Sigma stuff. So I could throw them in Sorens and Sable, Sabres, which that may happen. Uh, doo -doo -doo. There we go. Anything else that's applicable? Okay. I keep all my uh, decals in a single card sleeve that I had left over from like Magic the Gathering. Pretty useful. Okay. So. Probably going to end up On the Wendigo, the Karita is on the knee pad. So I can do that. Uh, I think it's on the left knee pad. So that will go on the left knee pad. I'll put the Sorensen Sabres on the right knee pad. Or Sorensen Sabres right there. And then put a new number right there on the, on the knee pad. I think that will work. And then hazard stripes. Maybe like right back here on the legs. Just so there's some detail on the back. What do you guys think about the, where the hazards should go? But I think right there on the back. I mean just some sort of little detail. So there's just something interesting to look at it from behind. So I'm going to go ahead and get that ready to go. Put down my gloss varnish. dry 
And then once I actually varnish the entire model with satin, I'll go back with the hard coat and hit the cockpit so it'll be reflective. Good times. I can go back away. And then for the highlight, the edge highlighting, it'll be that Wild Rider Red. So we're going to wait on that. So I need. I'm not. I'm going to do something very, very naughty. I'm going to go straight from the pot. I'm going to use Incubi Darkness for the eyes on the piranha. You know what? I think there's a better way of doing that. Because I'm going to jack up that skull paint. There's a better way. Forgive me. We're going to use non oil. Pure non oil. It's already dark in there. And the non oil should be able to sufficiently make it black in there boom rock on rock on Then since we're still working on the head, get some eel sun scarlet. Start giving a little bit of color in that mouth Tacky, tacky, tacky. Nope, oh, you're dry. So let's go ahead and apply decals, and then I'm going to call it a night, I think. I got a lot more accomplished than I thought I would. It helps you get good company. Truly, truly does. The prawn is almost done. He'll be finished this week. And the avalanche is almost done, too. So... Swords and sabers. We'll go for a big one. Oh, watch out. Here's my hobby blade has the tip has broke. Let's 
grab another one. Okay. There we go. There's one. Oh, stay. Go ahead and do a big let's have a big old drac party. Boom. And then numbers. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Lucky twenty one. for right now. Okay. So how I apply decals is probably going to drive some of you guys mad. But it works for me. It's my system. You're totally... You do it how you want to do it. Come on. There we go. I try to get them facing the orientation that I want that they'll end up being. Come on, 21. And then I'll put water, drop water around them on a paper towel so they absorb the water. I've seen people use like little dishes and other things or putting them on the wet palette themselves. Um, I may experiment with the wet palette method, but for right now, this is what I'm doing. So if this seems completely asinine or stupid, and it's not how you do it, it's just how it works for me. All right, and I do use Microsol to help it he make the adhesion between the decal and the miniature. I do use that. Yep. I gotta say, this little clamp, though, has been a... You guys can't see it, but this clamp that I got for the webcam is just effing awesome. Oh, so good. Just so proud of my creation. Okay. My creation. Is it real? Nope. Okay. So the reason I put the hard coat on there, the gloss, is because these are going to go on there kind of glossy. And so once they get sealed on there with the Microsoft, um and you go back over with a matte or a satin varnish, it'll help dull down the shine of the decal. Breathe. Just breathe. So I'm going to get some of the Microsol stuff, put it where I had the varnish. Yeah, you're not quite ready, are you? Yeah, but you are. Okay, well, I'll put some on that knee pad. Yeah. 
slides. Boom. Oh my gosh, perfect in one. And then just put Microsoft on top. Yeah, it's a little off. It's close enough for government work. I'm okay with it. Alright, Draconis logo. You are ready to go. Yay! I didn't fuck that up. Yay. Okay. Let's try one more time. Are you ready? You are this time. Uh oh. Come on. Oh my gosh! It's a Christmas miracle in, in April. Three for three. And they're not terrible. I, I, let, me, let me touch the ground. Oh god, it's cold. It's so cold. But it's so good. Alright, so... Yeah, decals applied. I don't want my voice cracked. I just suddenly went through puberty. So... Yeah, not too shabby. Let those set. Wash both of these thoroughly because I don't want that crap get mixing in with my paints. Also, if you don't varnish where you're going to apply the decals and use Microsoul, depending on the type of paint and how many layers of paint you put on there, it can eat away your paint. So. Be careful. Be very, very careful. Alright. Put the decals away. And I'd say... I had a pretty good day. So really just edge highlights left for the... Avalanche and then do his base and then for the piranha uh, Continue on the fade a little bit on his legs and clean up his arms and then go back And use the highlight color surf aqua to highlight his armor uh, That's not bad Not bad Looking good gonna have almost two mix done So we'll see how tomorrow goes, or later tonight. I may do pick this back up after I have dinner. But thank you guys for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. It was good talk, good inspiration. It was a lot of fun.